Okay, video number 14 of the Schneider Modicon Expansion Modules. We're going to be taking a look at analog current outputs today. And we're going to be looking at sourcing out between 0 to 20 or 4 to 20 milliamps on a TM3 expansion module. So specifically, this video has been based on the TM3 AQ2. Anytime we see a Q, that stands for output 2, telling us that there's going to be two outputs off of it. However, there is a larger one as well, the AQ4. So the wiring that we do inside of here could be expanded out to be utilized with the AQ4 as well. Exact same style, just more outputs that are going to be available. Taking a look at the data sheet, the data sheet is relatively simple for these ones over here. They tell us that we can use it the 221, 241, 251, or the 262 range of modicons. They tell us that it's going to go and have two outputs and that we can select to either go and use current as our output, 4 to 20 milliamps or 0 to 20 milliamps, or we can use voltage as our output, 0 to 10 volt or minus 10 to positive 10 volt. This video is going to be focused on the current, so we will jump ahead to the next bit of our... <clears throat> excuse me, a data sheet that we are going to go and have. Analog output resolution is going to be a little bit less than what I have got for input resolution. We remember from our previous videos here, the input resolution was usually going to be 16 bit bits, which was going to be 15 plus a sign. Output is going to be a little bit smaller. It's going to be 12 bits. So it's a little bit more coarse that we're going to be putting out off of this thing. When we're looking at our current, the values that we can go and change it from the card over here are going to be defined by these. If I'm doing 0 to 20 milliamps, I can change it in 4.88 microamp increments. And if I'm going to be doing it in 4 to 20 milliamp, I can do it at 3.91 microamp increments that I can step up or step down the current through my PLC. Stabilization time for this is going to be a millisecond. So we go and call for a change inside of our PLC. It's going to take it a millisecond before it's going to be able to reach that. And the conversion time is going to be one millisecond for that stabilization plus a millisecond per channel. If we've got a two input card, that is going to go and be two channels that we would need to have. Uh, plus then the controller cycle time. So ultimately it's still going to be tied to your controller cycle. The more streamlined your program is, the faster your cycle time is going to go and be. Uh, there is going to be as well inside of here a little bit of an output, you know, um, accuracy and drift that's going to go and happen with temperature and a few things like that. Nothing that we're going to concern ourselves with inside of this video. Just know that there is always going to be tolerances as with anything else. And then output ripple is going to go and refer to the amount that this thing could be moving up and down. Ideally, it would be a perfectly straight line, but if you would zoom in on that straight line, you're going to go and have, you know, little bits of ups and downs. They're guaranteeing us that there's going to be no more than 20 millivolts of ripple on our output at a time. This section down over here deals with the card itself. Because this card is going to be a source, we need to take some power in that it can convert out. So we're going to need to have 24 volts. And they're telling us that it should be kept within 20.4 to 28.8. Looking at the wiring for these, they show us that we have got 24 volts and 0 volts. So we're going to need an external power supply. We're taking it in through a fuse over here to go and provide power in to my actual unit. That's going to go and provide the power to the circuit boards that are going to be on the inside. We'll just sketch out, whoops, sorry, that one went way too far. We'll just sketch out these circuit boards over here. And then the circuit boards are what are going to allow us to go and create the 0 to 10 volt or 0 to 20 or 4 to 20 milliamp signals that we can send out. We do also see that there's going to be symbol for protective earth that we're going to go and connect this card down to. And then ultimately all of our shielding is going to be connected to the same common point. And last of all, we see that we've got a pile of NCs or not connected points that are going to be on this card. Uh, not connected written like that there. Uh, it is a little bit of misnomer because usually NC in the electrical world means normally closed, but here it's just going to be a not connection. All right, that's our data sheet. So let's now move on and just take a look at the physical components. We're going to go and use some fuse holders to go and carry that, you know, 160 milliamp. You'll note as well, actually, that it's a slight bit larger than what we have on our input cards. Input cards only need 100 milliamp of fusing. These should be a little bit higher because we need to source that current out. So we're going to be up to 160 milliamps to go and run them. Uh, CC fuses use HCLR type, or if you're going to go and use the smaller glass or ceramic fuses, you can also use these style of fuse holders. Whatever you do, put something in there that is going to properly protect that card.
And we'll do that inside of this drawing over here. Let's just run through the wiring real quick. We do see that we've got AC carried in through a DIN rail breaker into a DC power supply. That DC power supply is then going to go and put out 24 volts. And we see we take 24 volts into our main PLC, which is going to be this one over here, the M251 PLC. We also see that we've got that 24 volts carried across to this little setup that we have on our DIN rail so that we can go and connect these ones onto that. And we'll take a look at that now. So zooming in a little bit, let's just take a look at our PLC card. We see that here's the main CPU and then we've taken this expansion module and we have just butted it up against that. It makes its connection through the side. We see we've got our 24 volts, zero volts and our protective earth. And then we've got our Q0 and our Q1. So output zero and output number one off of it. Zooming back out here so that we can see all of our uh, lines, we do see we have got this cable over here that is going to be a 4 to 20 milliamps to our field device. So we're going to feed current out of this device. We are doing a shielded cable over here. So we see the shield, we see the ground or the bond that's inside of the cable, and then we see the two current carrying conductors over here. We are going to ground down our shield at this end, as well as apply our ground onto it. Remember, the shield should only be grounded at the sourcing end. So let's do that right away. We'll take our shield and we will take our ground, we'll tie those ones down. While we're in the process of grounding, we're also going to go and ground this card. So we'll come out of another one of our ground lugs. We'll take that over there. We've now got our card grounded. Then we're going to go and power up our card. So we're going to take 24 volts in. This is going to be fused through this fuse holder over here. And then we're going to go and take a negative in as well. So now we have got power applied to the card. The next thing that we're going to do is now apply these. So we're going to go and take our positive, whatever we're going to run out of our positive, we'll take it to Q1 over here. And then our negative is going to come out of the same one over there. So zooming in on this one, this is going to be our proper wiring for one of these cards. Power supply over here, that's going to power up this card so it can then source that current out to our field device and our wiring to our field device properly grounded and bonded down. 